Hi, besties. We wanted to give a warning before we begin. This episode touches upon topics of sexual assault and pedophilia, which some of our listeners might find disturbing. We will insert another warning before the sensitive material starts and ends so you can decide if you'd like to listen or not. Survivors are never alone and there are resources out there to help. You can call the National Sexual Abuse Hotline for confidential 24-7 support at one 800 Six five six four six seven three, or chat online at online.rain.org. We love you all. Now on to the episode. A twink and a redhead. A twink and a redhead. A twink and a redhead. A twink. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. All right. Pretty good song, huh? I like to oat, 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 apples and bananas. That one's the most That's satisfying. The most that's the most like it really gets what's, you going. What's your favorite like child song, like nursery song? Um, that one, and then the dare song is still stuck in my head. Yeah, my mind is my. Um, Remember this, bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. How, How many, many pieces, pieces do you, you wish? wish? Oh, such a good way to resolve a conflict. Do you remember Zudio? No. This might have just been my elementary school. There's a song that's like, Zudio, Zudio, Zudio. <laughs> and it's like, that. I walk through the door and what do I see? I see a great big man from Tennessee. Ooh, I like I that. I bet you $5 I could catch that man. I bet you $5 I can catch that man to the side, to the side. Oh Why do I? This is burnt. This what is like if, first grade. What if we see started solving international conflicts by just having the necessary parties play bubblegum. <laughs> hey. What if Hey, you just... can't decide whose land is whose? Okay, how about a how about a game of bubblegum? That'll really get things decided. That bubblegum was weird. Well, it's it's really just you have to be strategic in the number you chose and just hope that you know Bubble gum, bubble gum. Yeah. Yeah, no, there was a strategy to yeah. it. Um, anyways, what is new? Literally nothing. Well, yeah. there is something exciting we have to share. What? We are so excited to announce that we will be going to, to Disney. Disney! Yeah. Oh my god, we finally planned our Walt Disney World vacation and we are so we are so excited to just it's have a magical be time. Insane. And you guys know who will be there? Emily Boos. A lot of you guys surprisingly uh, an alarming amount of people. It's like two or three, but this is still alarming. Um that amount of people has been asking for an Emily Boos episode. They do not mm-hmm. know her. They do not know anything about Emily Boos. A lot of people want an Emily Boos episode. Hey, maybe we'll bring the equipment uh, to Florida. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a live Disney episode. Maybe we will. I, I'm i so excited for Disney. I keep like thinking about the churros at the Mexico Pavilion in Epcot. I can't wait to go around the world. And we have a reservation at Space 220. So not only are we going around the world, but we're going to Space in Epcot. It's, it's also the first time that we're going to be experiencing Disney World as 21-year-olds. We can legally Well, we're not 21. There. Well, over <laughs> 21. You're right. <laughs> no, we as can fresh 21 year old. Drink in Disney World. And that's huge. It It is pretty huge. That's a big deal. That's um, a huge deal. I'm excited for that. I, I, we talked about this. We have an amusement park episode if you guys didn't watch, but um, it was so fun when I went to Disneyland and I got drunk. I'm. It's just like magical. I'm so excited. Yeah. So. That's what's new. Yeah, that's really all that's new. Um, oh, how did you feel that Taylor Swift played Afterglow last night in Mexico City for the first time ever live? Um, and Cornelia. Yep. That's not one of my favorite. What's your favorite? Oh, wait. <laughs> that's one of my most <laughs> triggering. <laughs> I got your obsession with Daylight and Afterglow mixed up, and I knew that one reminded you of your toxic relationship and one you're obsessed <laughs> with. 
<laughs> I guess I got it a little. Daylight, I'm around. obsessed with. Afterglow reminds me of my toxic relationship. Oh, okay. So how did you feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I wasn't at that show. I actually probably would be mad if she played that at my show. I'd be like, damn, yeah. out of all the songs, like the one that triggers me the most, yeah. like seriously. Wow. Um, but Cornelia Street, interesting. Really interesting. Such a fucking good song. And I'm so mad I wasn't there to experience it. But like, I'm so happy she finally played it. Because yeah. the Cornelia Street live from Paris is it's like so genuinely good. one of my favorite, like performances of her of all time i didn't watch the full performance from mexico city so i wonder how if there was that sort of emotion still there you know what i mean because it's, it's such a good query let's just say she's never walking cornelia street again <laughs> and i don't think she will be no not after not after what happened oh my god <laughs> well i guess that's really all that's going on it's interesting though speaking of toxic relationships because this, this week's episode is dating. dating. Something we know quite a lot about. Just because, like, we're so hot, so a lot of people are like always chasing kind of after us, always chasing after us, always wanting to date. Um, oh, I was about to expose someone. I I won't. But let's just say someone was in my DMs this weekend, like a weird kind of random. Yeah, that was random. So random. It happens though. It does happen. Um, Did you respond? Yeah, I didn't know if he was trying to just be friendly or oh. not. But of course, he's a gay man, so he was looking for something right. extra, um, which is fine. Which is fine. But once I did, well, this is kind of an announcement. But I have a boyfriend. So does Ashley. Sorry. Sorry. Because oh, oh. you, you think all the people listening are like, fuck. Yes. I was really trying they, to date him. They are. They are. Right. Um, but once I exposed that I had a boyfriend, he just stopped answering me. Damn. And so I feel like that's so rude. It is. Oh, it's like now I don't no, have any he, value as a person. It was like there was a, he stopped answering and then out of nowhere was like, well, let me know if you want any acting advice. So okay. then he was like, okay. He's okay. nice. I <laughs> wanted to start this um, segment off with asking you a question. And that was, who was your sexual awakening? Sexual awakening? Or yeah. like in real life or TV? Have we talked Either about or. this? No, I don't think we have. We haven't talked about I this on the well, podcast? I think I know yours. Yeah. Jorgen von Strangle. Yeah, from, from Fairly Odd Parents. You love Jorgen von Strangle. He was he was so muscular. Oh, silver fox. And that big wand. <laughs> <laughs> also, like that outfit he wore. That like yeah, they tight knew what they were doing. The camo pants. He had like that classic like military cut. I would say yeah, hair, and white. Yeah, it's so surprising that you were seeking that out as what a six year old. Right, and you know what else we also have. Um, talked about this not on the pod yet john goslin yeah <laughs> from johnny k plus eight yeah john goslin for some reason was intriguing to me and yeah. i'm like 10 years old at this point because he's so fertile <laughs> he's so I fertile don't, i don't i mean i don't know if that was it yeah. I mean, it's not a lie, but um, John Gosling was just, he's just such a, I he was in his prime a beautiful man. Like I can't help but agree. <laughs> I really can't help but agree. I feel like I've looked up recent images of him and th they just don't. No, I'm do not it attracted to current John 2023 Gosling. John Gosling, but when I was like 10 Gosling? years old, pre pre-divorce John Gosling. Yeah, when he was being like verbally attacked all the time like that. John yeah. Gosling. Yeah. Anyone else for you? Um I can't think of any off the top of my head, just basically John Gosling and Jorgen von Strangle. How yeah. about you? I had 3. Okay. That I can think of off the I know top one. Of my head. Can I guess one? Yeah. Teenage Simba. <sighs> Nail on the head. Yeah. When Simba started seeing Akuna Matata and he was just this kind of down on his luck cub. And then as the song progresses, he becomes mature and he has his 
gorgeous mane of hair and he's kind of overcoming his emotional trauma cut to a few scenes later he's singing can you feel the love tonight with nala there those two lines are rolling around in the fucking wilderness yeah i something happened to me that day and i've never quite been the same and i i love him and then (laughs) after that steve from full house dj tanner's boyfriend dj tanner's boyfriend granny was so handsome I and he was so funny. And and <laughs> Danny didn't trust him. Oh, Danny didn't trust him at Which all. Which one's Danny the dad? Danny's the dad, Bob Saget. The uncles were very attractive to me. Both of them, actually. You liked Uncle Joey? And Jesse. Joey had I the personality just, You know to what? Me. It's funny. I was just talking to my sisters this weekend saying, why did Uncle Joey ever get a love interest? You know? like uh, uncle Was he gay? I think mm-hmm. if they made it today, I made the argument that if they he made Full House gay. today, he'd probably be gay because they never gave Joey a love interest. They only would ever give love interest to Jesse, who had Aunt Becky. And even Danny dated Vicky for some time. I mean, and, and his, come on, they're in San Francisco. They're in one of the gay capitals yeah. of the world. I mean. But Steve from Full House was so hot. He was so fucking hot. He was like a wrestler, I think. Ooh, loved him. And then after that, Gil from finding, finding nemo Fa- oh bad boy. bad boy shark oh he had the scar he and oh bad boy <laughs> uh sorry angelfish i think that's what his oh yeah i was not attracted to bruce the shark i don't I he was a little too much gil, too on the nose. yeah gil was such a bad boy a subtle, but almost. i love when someone is like a, a bad boy but has a soft, a soft spot heart. for someone and he had such a soft heart for, for nemo, nemo and i thought that was just so beautiful yeah and i was really i was really into him Gil was he was so kind because initially you don't you don't want to trust him you don't want to like him necessarily not at all and then he really shows that soft at first side. you are even like oh, is he the villain right but then it's revealed no he's just someone who's been through a lot in his life and he's a little cynical but he just needs someone to bring him out of that and you're willing to do that and I'm willing <laughs> to go to that orthodontist office hop in that tank and get after it hop in that tank bare chested and see what happens <laughs> knockers out and just <laughs> i'll wear my hottest tankini and i'll just <laughs> dip in that tank <laughs> dip in that tank you know who would try to do something if you dipped into that tank darla the starfish <sighs> is that darla no the star- that's the Wait, annoying ass bitch the starfish the starfish i hate to say it but she's a lesbian Actually, I don't hate to say it. She's a lesbian. Was the starfish a woman? <laughs> <laughs> Are you thinking of that fish that would see her reflection and say it was her sister? No. Oh, I love that bitch. <laughs> that bitch was everything. I'm talking about the starfish. I she was like... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess like, I never... Guys, it would... she, here she comes. I never thought the starfish was a woman. I thought it was like a lesbian. Oh. I feel like I've always thought it was a, a lesbian. Interesting. So I'm thinking if you were to get down in that tank. Well, she wouldn't care. If she would then get she on that. she wouldn't be in with... Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she would glue herself to your pussy. <laughs> saying right now i'm saying you're you're you took <laughs> this innocent thing of me diving down to seduce gill and you made it into something else <laughs> because there's other fish in that tank and you're huge compared <gasps> to that no, you know who i know you would like who? that shrimp that would clean everyone <laughs> yeah or the puffer fish no oh. i hate puffer fishes uh, oh I'm this sorry. puffed as well oh yeah uh, anyway we should get on to topic of dating this is on the topic of dating i know but because this shaped who we sought out but i want to talk about <laughs> real life experiences oh wow who was your first kiss my first kiss was a girl a girl <gasps> <laughs> a girl you're not a gold star gay well, yeah, yeah, that <laughs> pertains to pussy. Oh. <laughs> um, it was Kayla. Oh. And in the fifth grade. You're older, okay. Yeah, she was a year older, but technically we're like the same age. I don't even remember exactly how we met. I think it was from our pop, local Pop Warner football and cheerleading. Such a good networking experience. Yeah, I didn't play football. Shocker. <laughs> But my brother did and my sister cheered. And so I would just play on the playground. And honestly, that playground 
It was at your elementary school, so oh. you know this playground well. Um, but this playground was a really big trauma area for oh, my childhood. I'm so sorry. It's the site of where a lot of bullying took place. Oh. <laughs> like looking back. But also, you know, Marissa, one of our friends, she's not he's not a friend. There was a kid in our grade, his older sister. Yes, I know who you're Marissa about. was like my guardian. Like she was like the gay guardian and like protected me at all costs. And anytime there was a bullying incident, like That's so lovely. It was so nice. But Kayla cheered and so i remember like waiting like at the playground like hoping she'd like come, How old were you? come play after fourth or fifth grade i think we met in fourth grade nice okay <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh my god and i remember dancing with her to like love story or you belong with me in fourth grade at the at the bonfire that this pop warner team would have every year and yeah so that's how we met and then we kissed at a park nice and it was like a peck, like right as it was you like, yeah. But I remember practicing like on my pillow. Aww. Anyways, who was your first kiss? My first kiss was Richie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and weird. We not him. <laughs> He's not weird. It's just like really random. Like sorry. Oh, you didn't know that. I feel like I did, but we were I forget boyfriend and girlfriend in fifth grade, and we decided how to many. Sorry. I had so many boyfriends. <laughs> it was like a new one every two weeks. In fifth grade. Ew, but sometimes I would like commit to one and then two days later I'd be like, ugh, I can't deal with this commitment right now. Like yeah. I'm just not meant for to be in a monogamous relationship right now. Yeah. At ten. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I met Richie behind the stairs in our fifth, sixth grade school. Um we we met behind the stairs to go from the first floor to the second floor. And we snuck out of lunch. I put on so much Burt's Bees chapstick. Like, it was unreal. I was so didn't you, minty. Didn't you talk about this already? Or, like, you were obsessed with Burt's Bees. Because remember the story you told about Diary Wimpy Kid premiere? You were also doing that. <laughs> yeah, I put on my Burt's Bees. You thought that was, like, lipstick or something back then? Like, I didn't want to have chapped lips. To me, having chapped lips when pecking someone <laughs> would be the most embarrassing, yeah. life-changing event that could take place. And that's pecking, not that's pegging. pegging. Not to be confused with pegging. That is not what I was doing behind the stairs in fifth yeah, grade. Just so we pecked. <laughs> it was so romantic. And then we went our separate ways. Yeah. Our town was really kind of crazy with, like, the whole dating thing. Like, I remember people, the people who were, like, early bloomers <laughs> there would were having be, sex no, there would in be, eighth grade. Like, we would be in middle school and we'd hear about people <laughs> having sex. And to me, I was, like, that was the craziest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, I was, like, what? Like, I viewed them as, like, 40 years old. Also, but they're in my I'd grade. be, like, damn, like. I feel like in like sixth grade, because like there was one that I heard about in sixth, sixth grade. grade. I was like, damn, like I'm going home and I'm watching like Hannah Montana reruns. Yeah. Like that is. But that's normal. I don't know what. What? It's normal to have sex? No. It's, oh. Well, yeah, but not. I mean, that age is kind of crazy. Yeah, that's a little um, crazy. I wonder how that has affected them in the long run. You it's, know what it's I mean? a good query. It is a good query. But yeah, we would hear about like crazy stuff like that. And I feel like that really rocked me when we were in middle school. So, like, there was like multiple people I could think of. Where, like, yeah, oh. me too. There were like couples. Yeah. And they would kind of rotate. Yeah. Like the people who had sex stayed having sex with each other. You know, <laughs> like you hear about someone else. Yeah, like, but it was the same group. And like, yeah. meanwhile, like, I don't even think I had the ability to have sex at that point. I was still, you know what I mean? like, yeah, I was still <laughs> applying my bird's bees looking for a pack. I was reading the Hunger Games. Yeah. Like. So who then was your first date? I have issues. Because you probably were having, you probably were doing other things if we <laughs> ever went on a date. Hi, besties. Just jumping in here to let you guys know that this is your warning. The next few minutes deals with some of my gay trauma growing up, including a story involving sexual assault and pedophilia. If these topics are disturbing to you, you can go on ahead and skip to the time code 27 minutes and 19 seconds. Thank you, guys. 
Now back to the story. It's being gay Mm. as a young gay growing up. It's hard because you see all your other friends start dating and meeting boys at school and whatever. And you being like the only one of the only openly gay kids at your school. It's like, what the heck? Like, how do I meet people? And so unfortunately, one of the only ways I thought I could meet other gay people was Grinder. And I'm can an event for a gay for teen. A, I for feel a gay like. teen, and I want to share this kind of stuff because you're not alone. And I feel like I, it's getting real right now. But Please I feel like I like um, continue. I lived with a lot of shame for my actions as like a 16 year old. But it's like so much more common than you think. And I'm sharing this so other people don't feel alone. Mm. But I had Grinder literally at the age of 16 because I thought that was like the only way that I could meet people like who were gay. And I was so naive about it too. Like thinking that's how you like get dates yeah. and like stuff like that. Cause all I wanted at the end of the day was just a connection, but people definitely like took advantage of my age. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Should I Looking tell the story and then what we did 10 years late later? Sure. Should I? If you want, if you're comfortable. I'm comfortable, but just know as I tell this that I'm fine and I'm stronger because of it. And like, I like, I'm okay. So don't like be like crying for me. <laughs> Anyways, when I was 16 years old, there was a guy who said, told me his name was Adam and he said he was a student at Princeton and that he was like 20, early 20s, like 20 or 21, which already is red fucking flag. weird. Yeah, because when I was 20 or 21, I would never look at a 16 year old no, and be disgusting. like, damn, like, you know what I mean? Like, that is crazy. Um, And so he like acted like he really liked me and was interested in me. And one day he secretly like picked me up from my house. And I remember his car being like a mess. Like it was garbage and shit everywhere. And I was like, okay, how old did he look to you? He definitely, I don't know at the age of 16, if I like thought this, but like he definitely looked older. Ew. Like, yeah. And so, he told me that he and his roommate were in a fight and that he's staying in a hotel now because they're in a fight. And I was like, oh, okay. Also, I told him I didn't want to do anything. Anyways, we get to the hotel and he basically pressures me into like doing the nay nay. And like, I w- it was just like a weird thing. Like, I didn't know how to like, um, like I didn't, think it was the r word right like in that moment or for like maybe years after i just was like oh i'm i'm stupid like i should have never done that my parents always told me not to meet strangers on the internet and like i blamed myself for a long time um anyways fast forward about a year i meet someone through like instagram i think or like hunger games like i don't really know and he's like a bit older i think he was like 25 but he was like very nice i think i'm like 17 he's just like a i don't he was nice he never tried to do anything sexual to me or anything to me and he lived near where this guy lived apparently i forget how we even put that together but i told him about what happened and he was like i'm gonna get to the bottom of this and i was like okay because i that told him things were not really adding up, like the roommate, the Did car. Did you ever like, have contact with Adam after that? Yeah, I'll get there. Oh, okay. Um, but basically, this guy, I, his name's R- Brian. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Brian apparently meet, talks to this guy on Grinder, and then makes plans to meet with him, but for the sake of just sussing it out okay i guess and so he goes over to um adam's apartment and there's like no furniture apparently it's like messy like really crazy so he leaves on the way out he looks into his mailbox 
and sees letters with a different name that he told me. What? How did he know for sure it was him? It had the same first name. Like it was said Adam. Mm-hmm. And it was like the unit number that mm-hmm. he looked into the mailbox. But did you see like a photo or something? Yeah. Well, oh, when you Google okay. the name, then it like has stuff that like comes up and looks like him. Interesting. And when you Google him, it says his age is like 33. Ew. So like a fucking oh. predator. Um, and I'm 16, 17. I like don't want to tell anyone because like I think it's my fault oh. that it all happened. And I was just like kind of living with that shame. And I just like I would see him on Grinder or something like years later, like as a 21 year old or something. And I would Ew. be like I would like message him to see if he was if because he wouldn't remember me. And. I would see how far he would like take it. And then I'd be like, like, what's your name? And he'd be like, Adam. And I'd be like, I try to tell me to get him to tell me his full name. And then I'd be like, Oh, isn't your name Adam bleep from bleep, bleep, bleep. Like, and I would just tell him like I knew everything, but I, to this day, I don't know what I could do at this point because I'm 25 now, but I would love to like, pursue something legally yeah. like i know his full That's name so and everything creepy. i wonder it's if he's still in that same location yeah but i guess i want people to know that if you've ever had a similar experience like that it's literally not your fault like you are 16 years old yeah you like people are fucking sick like i'm 25 i would never fucking look no, at that's disgusting like that is disgusting I'm sorry that happened to you babe it's okay but anyways my first real date. <laughs> <laughs> but we did scope out that apartment oh, later yeah. in life. Like a year or two ago. We were trying to get to the bottom of things. We went to his apartment and like <laughs> I wanted to like knock on his door. But I don't know if he was there. Yeah, we decided not to. We, we decided not to. Because also what if he's like dangerous? Yeah. We don't know. We were And we were being responsible. Yeah, but it was like it was kind of silly. It was yeah, like I was we're taking just being in a silly mood. Yeah. So. So that was my first date. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel like dating, like for me anyway, was a lot of just like getting picked up and driving around. Like that's yeah. all there was to do. Like when you're like 16 and like you're hanging out with a boy, like. There's something so weird about, like, going to someone's house or having someone over your house. Yeah. So I'd just get picked up and we'd, like, drive around and we'd go to, like, Wendy's or something. Was this weird for you, too? Oh, well, I guess you said Wendy's. But, like, would you, like, would it be weird if you guys actually went to a restaurant? Like, would you be scared people would see you and then come to conclusions? Our town was so gossipy. It was. Yeah, I guess I would be. Yeah, I, I would be, like, scared someone would, like, see me. Yeah. But then sometimes I'd be, like, if I was, like, into the person, I'd be, like, yeah, like, <laughs> here <laughs> yeah. I am. Uh, or I'd just, like, go to a park and, like, smoke weed with someone. Yeah. And that was our date. It was so romantic. I had a secret lover. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Darren. Da- I had a secret lover, Darren. Darren Chris. And we... It started like he was kind of he didn't wasn't very comfortable with himself. So it was like I only like guys. He's older like, too. He than was us. T- like a two year two grades above us. Mm-hmm. He was like I only like guys like um like to hook up with. Like, I don't romantic. think I could be like romantic. Fast forward, he he falls in love with me, of course. Um, and but we would go to like restaurants like thirty minutes away from our town oh, to go on stop. dates. Their relationship, Grant and Darren's, was very, like, normal people core, where, like, Grant was Marianne and Darren was Connell, or very August core as well. Super August core. Very, like, let's go meet in the parking lot of the football field. We would, every night for a summer... You would sleep in parking lots together. Yeah, and we would go to, like, the football (laughs) complex or, like, fields in our town and like have a blanket and just lay there and watch the stars like it was giving like it was definitely giving a movie plot yeah it was i was obsessed with that. i was literally like writing the script when grant would yeah. tell me things i was like ah uh, yes scene three yeah <laughs> ashley was a fan i was such a fan to this day like i'm still such a sympathizer yeah i am too but ultimately 
yet. No, but it was such a <laughs> special time. It was. Unfortunate it was. that it had to be so secretive, but it was yeah. very cinematic. It was. It w- that was probably my first like love. Oh. I guess date. <laughs> date and love. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess that's my first date. Yeah. What about yours? I mean, like I said, I would just drive around oh, yeah. and like with people. I I guess first like formal date maybe Andrew, a villain, a villain. <laughs> He was such a villain, and me and a me and our friends uh, he's hated. Like, him. Yeah, he's a, like a a rude, mean, terrible person. <laughs> no, literally terrible. Yeah, not a fan. But I, pff, probably him, unfortunately. Let's talk about our current lovers. Yeah, our current better <laughs> than our past. My current lover it caused so much drama when I met him. Yeah. But <laughs> that's the only way it would make sense for you to get into a relationship, I feel like. It wouldn't be simple. For you, no, it would be dramatic. Also, I've gotten so much shit within the gay community for, like, wanting to date as opposed to just fucking. Mm. Like, people think I'm a more... You get more shit, I feel like, being, like, wanting to date than being a slut in the gay community. Like, people think you're more crazy really yes like if you express interest in someone and like go on a few dates and then it doesn't really work out or whatever then it's like they're crazy and then the gay community is so small it feels like at times that then it like word gets out there's nothing crazier than when you meet a gay person in new york city and like you go to follow them on instagram and they're followed (laughs) by like 20 (laughs) other gay people you know yeah but basically it's such a strong network yeah i'm gonna I don't know if I'm going to call my current boyfriend, Brendan. I don't know if he wants to be talked about what well, he said. This is fine to talk about, but how I met, there was a guy. Let, the timeline starts, let's say in October. I like met this guy who we like, were kind of hooking up. It was this, it's like a two week ordeal. Basically we were like kind of hooking up, but then he was also like really cool. So I liked hanging out with him in, in a friend's kind of way. Mm-hmm. I kind of made it clear. I didn't really want anything more. I guess he kind of liked me. And then I realized, oh, I don't really want that. Right. So I kind of just called it off and continued on with my life. Very normal thing to do. Yeah. Fast forward to January ish. We had a mutual friend. And he was my friend and he started hanging out with this guy. I don't even know. Can we name them? So Ren. Ren. Okay. Ren. And who's the guy I was hooking up with? Mark. Yeah. So Ren was my friend and then became friends with Mark. And so then I'm like, oh, they're hanging out a lot now. Maybe we could all be friends and I can make amends with Mark. And so I asked I basically apologized to Mark for like things not working out and if I hurt his feelings or seem to have let him on in any way. And so then it was like fine and we all started hanging out and we all hung out one time. It was really fun. And then the brunch and then the brunch occurred. I was there. Ashley (laughs) was there. I invited Ashley. Um, Mark invited some of his friends, including a guy named Brendan. Brendan. And I thought Brendan, I actually had no idea it was going to end the way things ended. Well, so like, I was at this brunch and Grant and I were kind of at the end of the table. Like we're always placed at brunches. Yeah. <laughs> we can oh, never get a middle seat. Damn. It's so it's, unfortunate. It is. So we're at the end of our table. just kind of doing our thing. And we're like all getting drunk. But I left to go see Cocaine Bear. And we had, I didn't even talk to Brendan the entire brunch. Because we're on he opposite was on the end. opposite end of the table. So I was pretty shocked was, when I learned where the night ended. <laughs> he was wearing that American. I remember it because I was like, because you told me you're like, oh, I hooked up with Brendan. I was like, the one in the American flag <laughs> denim jacket, really? But it's cool. Yep. It's great. <laughs> Basically, we went to another place, kept drinking. I tell Mark, I'm like, I think Brendan's kind of cute, and Mark's like immediately like. Oh, I don't think you're Brendan's type. And I was like, oh. Kind of insulting. Okay, yeah. Anyways, I was Brendan's type, turns out, because we started talking. And then, like, 
we had like a romantic like thing for a second we like ran out of the bar we were in and then we ran to like the salvation army and we're like <laughs> it was like a montage from a movie where it's like times passing we're just like ha 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 like he's taking pictures of me wearing like these the thumbs. salvation army is notoriously the most horny spot in new york city <laughs> yep yeah. and we were in those aisles Ooh. um anyways but they're all like kind of following us so we would like run off to the store and then i would be like where'd they go they would follow us oh, God. <laughs> and then we were into like some other place and then it ended at this pizza restaurant and we're eating pizza, and he like goes outside. Brendan, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan goes outside, and Mark looks at me, and he's like, "Why the fuck are you like trying to get with all my friends? Like, this is why you have no gay friends because <gasps> you just want to fuck all them and blah blah. blah. Like, Jesus you just want to Christ, take it down, like, fucking not. Right? And he was screaming in the restaurant. Like, other people are there, and he's screaming. And I didn't even say anything. I was just kind of looking at him like in disbelief that someone was like talking to me like this. Like even if you did have some sort of issue, this is how you like handle it. And I was like, I don't want to be friends with someone who does this. And also you clearly like have some sort of feelings like about me still that are unresolved with you. Yeah, so we wouldn't be able to be friends. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. And also this is why you're acting this way. Like it was just so weird, but he was just calling me a slut basically for like expressing interest in brendan and so then i leave and brendan's like outside oblivious to everything and he's like why are they still in there and i was like i'm not allowed to talk to you (laughs) (laughs) but the night ended with um me hanging out with for the rest of the night brendan oh my god me hanging out with brendan the rest of the night and we were just kind of dating like ever since yeah since, yeah since like february yeah crazy and i don't talk to mark anymore at all because i'm sorry but speaking of you guys ashley <gasps> her current man's <gasps> eli yeah they have been dating for two years now on and off <laughs> you don't have to say that every time <laughs> we went to a comedy show or it was no we, of, we've known each other for two years but there was like a very it was a break it was a little break but like you don't have to always say that a comedian I once like <laughs> at this comedy show a comedian was up there and like they're sitting front row so he asks how long like they've been dating <laughs> and i think like his name's eli eli answers it and then ashley's like um i go like she's like well there was the break like starts going <laughs> into like these details no it's bad whenever someone asks us i'm like oh do you want all the details because actually we stopped talking for a few months and it was dramatic and yeah, yeah. it was dramatic it was, it was pretty crazy it was. but what if i told you guys that eli is on the line eli is on the line and He's, he doesn't hear us yet, but I'm going to ask him some questions. Guys, um, be warned. Eli has a big person. <laughs> <laughs> so Eli has probably a gonna huge, come in hot. Eli has a huge And you, you know what, how he's going to start it? I know him so he's well. Like, what's up, yeah, What's up, subscribers? Because <laughs> that's what he said. Eli, Eli's so funny. Like, this is dramatic, but like, I couldn't picture someone better. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's nice. so that's so embarrassing but like he's no, so funny imagine, you've hated i know some imagine if past. it was like a straight no, like remember, annoying remember well, he is straight, you hated but. someone from my past we already said andrew oh <laughs> you hated him yeah 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 you did not like him yeah and i still don't sorry if you're listening i'm not fuck you yeah <laughs> okay let's get eli on the line uh what's up subscribers <laughs> <laughs> it's your boy Eli, before you came on, I said, you know how Eli's going to introduce himself? He's going to go, what's up, subscriber? <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what happened. Thank you thank you so much for joining Eli, us. Eli, you are our first guest on the podcast. Thank how you guys for know? having me. I'm, I'm honored. Holy shit. I'm a f- of course. <laughs> it's really no problem at all. It's, but we wanted to play a little game yeah, with you. Yeah, so I have a couple of first questions Um to get started but first of all how did you and ashley meet uh so uh my friend's little sister calls me up one day and is like what are you looking at 
Uh, Sorry, to those listening, he's just staring up at something on this Zoom call. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> my... Sorry, continue. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. My friend's little sister, like my best friend in the world's little sister hits me up one day and is like, hey, Eli, uh, I have this very uh, you know, awesome friend that I want you to meet. And I was like, I don't know how I feel about you know dating one of your friends, Hope. And mm. she's like, okay, but she's like really hot. And I was like, oh, oh okay. And um, then, and then sparks, boom, fireworks, Ashley. Cause baby, you're a fire, you work. Um, yeah. Wh- so like when you, where did you first meet? It was a party or something? Bar. Um, oh. I met her in a bar. Um, I met you in a bar. Wait. I was blacked out. <laughs> she what i actually didn't know and is like entirely too concerning um is or what is entirely concerning to me is that she was drunk for most of like the first 72 hours we hung out and you and y'all were really hitting it off yeah you thought i you had really no hitting... idea i thought i was just like i thought i just suddenly developed like a substantial <laughs> amount of game and then uh she was just was, yeah. drunk he he thought I was really into zodiac signs because I was so drunk. Like that's the only thing I felt like talking about. <laughs> it's weird. Don't, I'm not. And into I don't. Zodiac signs I don't know well. anything. No, I don't know anything about them. Yeah. So I was just, like making shit up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um. So moving on, what is your favorite thing about Ashley? Besides how smart, pretty, talented, Tight. funny. Um. <laughs> Well, you just gave him. You just said he yeah, can't. Yeah, no, them. you kind of stole a few of my answers there. I'd say that um, when I first met Ashley, I thought that she was incredibly dumb. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I genuinely thought she was an idiot. Um, really? Yeah. She just gives off this, like, I have no idea what I'm doing vibe. And then yeah. uh, I went and spoke with her, and I'm like, oh my God, this girl is incredibly intelligent, like, way smarter than me and um pretty and awesome and just overall very funny um ashley lacks um common sense sometimes well not common sense. it's like street smart it's like yeah i don't have street smart she's like like, super book smart like she'll tell you anything that's happened can i give an example of one time that i didn't have street smarts of one time i didn't have street smarts yeah one time i lost my apartment keys to our last apartment <laughs> i like just i lost them in between trader joe's the subway our apartment i couldn't find them this was crazy so i couldn't find them anywhere i probably dropped them on the street and i had shit in the apartment that i needed and grant was on the night shift so he wasn't going to be home for a while and instead of calling our landlord or doing <laughs> or no i called the landlord and he told me to like kind of go fuck myself so the next rational step for me was to call a locksmith, pay five hundred dollars for him to change the doors yeah. completely. It just wasn't a smart move for me. Yeah, and I, I was thinking like, uh, like why couldn't you like get a copy of your key or wait? Or yeah, come to my office. Come to your office. Nope. Get I paid five hundred dollars for someone to change the locks. Um, it was like s- I feel like door. it was so fast too. Yeah. Like because I was at work and then I I like, oh it was within the span of thirty minutes. <laughs> Like you just automatically. It was crazy, and then looking back, I'm like, hmm. there was other. There was so options. many other options. And anyway. we still haven't received our security deposit. Um, and we never will. Uh, yeah, we should probably, we should probably look into that. But yeah, anyway, uh, um, <laughs> do, Eli, do you want to play a game of between you and Grant, who knows me the best? Yeah. Can I? Should I ask the questions? Oh wait. Yeah. Yeah. So then we can yeah. guess. Okay. Ready? Ready? Okay, first question. Wait, actually, before, were you threatened by me when you met me? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say for a little bit. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like... Pussy? <laughs> yeah, no, I was... Um, attracted to him. He was almost attracted, attracted to him. I don't know. Yeah, I just I just thought you were no, mad cool. I feel like you weren't insecure until you learned that Grant and I fuck. Yeah, I think like the <laughs> amount of times you guys made out in like a short term was like pretty yeah. was pretty uh pretty scary. A right. lot of people A yeah. lot of people have that initial reaction. Yeah. Yeah. No, um like you guys definitely fuck on the side, but like I'm okay with it. <laughs> so 
that, and, and that's, that's called great. being comfortable in your masculinity okay, and, 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 and in the relationship. Yeah, like, that is that's being an ally. Yeah, yeah. you're such letting, a letting you have sex with my with my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. You're thank such a you, feminist. and thank you for oh that. I appreciate it. You're so brave. Um, so let's get started with the game. All right. <laughs> Who knows? So yeah, what was my college major? Uh, Russian. Nope. Okay, you, wait till I count to three. What do you mean? We both have to answer at the same time. Oh, no, let him go first, okay. and then I'll go. Uh, incorrect. Uh, English with Russian well, lit minor. Uh, also incorrect. Grant. English writing and media with a minor in Russian. Correct. That's okay, what, but that's <laughs> a college together. That's bullshit. <laughs> I know. We literally went. To okay. Next question. <laughs> what was my first pet's name? Should I, should I go first? Well, let's give oh. Eli a chance. Okay. <laughs> my is, answer is locked in. This is so unfair. You guys have been friends since like six years. Like, should yeah, I? but you're Eli, her Eli, boyfriend. Please. You're Grant's, her boyfriend. Grant's turn to answer. Mia. Correct. <laughs> Damn. I do that. This is not what I thought this podcast was going to be. You're going to give me a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's go. Next question. What? Aside from Grant, what is the name of my best friend? I'll give you this. Eli? Of your best friend? I mean, arguably Buddy, but it, it's not <laughs> it's not Chief. Um, it's a person. That's... My best friend. Oh, my God. Would it be me? Is it me? <laughs> I feel like no. it's me. A best I'm, friend. I'm pretty sure it's me. You know this person. You no, it's me. Oh, with this person. Okay, it's not you, Eli. No, it's me. Eli, Je- Grant, who is it? Jenny. Yeah. Are you kidding no, me? No, 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 no. It's not Jenny. It's me. I All love right, Jenny, shut the fuck up. Okay. It's me. Any, anyways, um. What is my favorite color? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel like you don't like colors. Black. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Period. Um, what is my... <laughs> Drink of choice if I'm out for the night. Uh, this is so martini. Correct. I was gonna say tequila soda with lime. Well, that's later in the night. That's but my first choice is an espresso martini and then a tequila soda. soda lime. Yeah. And then if I'm really great in college, do you guys know what I drank? Vodka crayons. Tequila water limes. Oh. Just water down tequila and chug it. Before okay. that, you had an even grosser drink though. You told me about. What, what was it? I don't know. I think it was like high school time frame. Okay. Oh, she was drinking like Svedka. Yeah. Okay. Um. Skull and something or something gross. Coffee, vodka, and blue Gatorade. <laughs> That's something I drank a few times. <laughs> That's disgusting. I know. Um. Okay. Wow. What was one of my past illegal pastimes in high school that I participated in with Jenny? My um. Answer is locked in. Grant, what well, Eli? Do you have a chant? Do you want? No, I, 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 I think you should go first, Grant. I, I'm tired. Of going. Um, pulling Jeebs from dirty ass water bottles with Jenny. Well, that's <gasps> true, but I was gonna say fridging. <laughs> yeah, you would go from 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 house. You told me that you would go from house to house. No, taking wait. people's beers and then other liquor in their fridge. And Jenny then was, out, and then you got caught. Yeah, Jenny was dating this older guy, and he we were younger, and he would be like, guys, like I know the best way to score alcohol. You go in people's <laughs> open garages, and you take the alcohol out of their fridges. And we were like, it's genius. So we were like literally robbing people. Yeah. This, by the um, way, is the most New Jersey pastime I've ever heard of. Yeah. Well, I was comforted when I went to college. I met like people from Chicago. Who also fridge. And they were like, yeah, fridging. They called it something else. But I was like, damn, wow. I guess this is a universal experience. Okay. Interesting. One- what? <laughs> At what hold age? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I was coming on this podcast under the assumption that this was going to be Hey Eli, what are things you love about Ashley? And then hey Eli, I did that. Tell me more about you know. Tell me more about you and Ashley's relationship. I, I didn't expect this to be an interrogation of how much I remember and 
I'm feeling insecure that I didn't. Well, go. you really thought this was going to be a wholesome yeah, come on. thing. You re- knowing us. Come on. It started that way. Uh, but it would never end okay. that way. What? Well, what is my Mario player of choice? When I play Mario, who do I ooh. choose as my character? Yoshi? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Good. Eli, see, yes. I wasn't certain on that. I would have guessed that, but. Good job. That was good, Eli. Yeah. Um, okay. Where is Ashley's clitoris located? <laughs> you could beat me in that because. I, I don't know. Somewhere. Somewhere. I. All right. I feel like Grant won, but Eli gets a participation. Yeah. Trophy. No, that was good, Eli. Good job, you, Eli. What, what is something that maybe a lot of people won't know about Ashley? Something people wouldn't know about Ashley is that um, we just came back from a family vacation and she did not shit for seven days straight. <laughs> but she was the biggest trooper in the world because as soon as we got home, she took a gigantic poop. And I'm, I really am so incredibly proud of her. First of all, it wasn't seven days. It was 11. As if that makes it better. <laughs> it makes me braver. Okay. Thanks, not Eli. All, not all soldiers. Of course. Not all battles Love are fought. Talk to you later. Oh, okay. Bye. Love Bye, you. Bye, Grant. Love you, too. Thank Bye. You. Love you. Bye, guys. Not all battles are fought <laughs> with soldiers, but some are fought with laxatives. That was fun. That was so I much fun. I think that kind of wraps up our dating segment. Yeah. Again, maybe we'll talk more in the future. Maybe about we'll this. do breakups next. Ooh. Ooh. Announcement the good of the group. We're singing two different songs. Okay, announcement. What do you have, pussy? Oop. Okay, so I don't know if you've noticed this, but every few months there's kind of a word that gets oversaturated online. For example, toxic is a word that people kind of have taken and adapted into Mm. kind of any situation it's like Mm -hmm. someone didn't make eye contact with you they're toxic yeah gaslighting is another instance where people don't really grooming grooming like all of these words can people shut the fuck up about vocal fry these days everything is like oh this vocal fry like (laughs) That word is not in the Bible. That word has not yeah. been in circulation long enough for everyone to be using it the way they're using it. Like, I, I hate vocal fries. But though. like... Oh my God, I'm doing it right now. Like, uh, I feel like I never noticed it until everyone started talking yeah, about it. Yeah, that is true. There's this... And w- it's like, shut the fuck up. This one lady at my job, like in meetings she'll just fall into like a vocal fry though like i'll start like this and then i'll like so we just really need to like blah, 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 yeah. yeah and i'm like what no i agree that like i guess it's annoying but like what came first the chicken or the egg was it annoying or did people just start talking about it and now i can't unsee it it's true it's so an interesting query i want people to shut the fuck up about vocal fry because those words are not in the bible and i don't want to hear it anymore and we only do we only my vocabulary is strictly strictly from from the bible Bible. it's biblical i have a biblical (laughs) diction hell yeah hell yeah (laughs) your turn my announcement there is someone who keeps commenting on our youtube videos of the podcast for me to show my feet i saw that i saw a comment on youtube please stop like, the more you comment that, the more I'm going to make sure the I'm The more wearing. socks he's wearing. The more socks I'm going to put I'm on. always like, dogs out on the podcast, and he doesn't seem to care about that. Why doesn't anyone care about Ashley's dogs? Like, seriously. Fun. Wait, that is crazy. Also, like, never for free. Yeah. Why would oh. I, like, if you have money to, to pay up, send us the DM. Yeah. Otherwise. I'll send you a picture of my bunion for $50. <laughs> 15? No. 50. 50. Yeah. Yeah. No, my worth. (laughs) Yeah. And that's not a valid offer. But yeah, if you want to see these bad boys, you're going to have to pay up. Pay up. Pay up. Uh, Okay. Now let's turn to a viewer. Her name is Krista. Let's see what she has for us. My announcement um, is that I think you guys are going to be famous. I think you have star power. And I just would like to say it first, um, <laughs> and that I'm a original fan, stan, whatever, um, 
so yeah i'm gatekeeping but not really i'm just putting it out there i'm, I'm calling it right now love you guys both so much Bye bye thank you so much krista <laughs> You sounded like an NPR. Thank you so much, Thank you Krista. So much, Krista. I for mean, those that kind words. there's nothing. When been... we get our Hollywood Walk of Fame, oh my I'm going to say, Krista, Krista, please come out. And then they're going to say, Krista died. <laughs> Krista died? No, she didn't die. They're going to say, Krista's not here. And then they're gonna say. So she's not a fan anymore by the time. Yeah. Wow. But then she's gonna see. It's gonna be like an Avril Lavigne skater boy situation. She's gonna see us on TV getting all the of fame. And she's gonna emerge back in our lives. And we're gonna go to Mykonos together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank Thanks, you so Krista. much, Krista. I mean, words have never been more true. Yes. yes. We have a few ideas kicking around in these old noggins. Yeah. And we're we were born Wait, famous. Wait, I want to tell you something real quick. What? You know the movie Bottoms that's coming out? It's like, yeah. it looks so silly and funny yeah. and I want to see it. They wrote that when they were at NYU together and they have pictures of a whiteboard with all their ideas <gasps> for the movie. And I was like, we literally We've have done one. that. And I came up with an idea for a TV show and we wrote it on a whiteboard in his freshman dorm. Yeah. And Aww. someday it'll be produced. Someday it will. So many ideas. So We're many ideas in these noggins. So many. Also, right. um, come see a, a Twink and a Friends September 6th in Greenwich Village Comedy. And one of those friends might be a redhead. Yep. Please come. I'm, I'm also scared. Please like, I don't come. know what the fuck that night is going to be. But it's going to be a movie. Just, yeah, just buy a ticket and come. If you use code GRANT, you can get $5 off, so it's a $20 ticket. Woo don't, don't be cheap. Like, come yeah, on. Like, please, it's $20. It's not that big of a deal. Seriously, I'll pay for it. All oh. right. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> you can't Okay, thanks, guys. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.